So much of meat and food production is about scale and speed, a drive to produce more food for cheaper. But it's unsustainable, it's unethical, and there is an alternative. So we've come to Hay Farm, who produce meat and vegetables for Riverford, to find out about why their mixed farming system is better for animal welfare, the environment, and nature. Thanks so much for having us here, Andy. So we're on Hay Farm down in Cornwall, it's a beautiful sunny day. Could you tell us a little bit about your farm and your cows, what you're doing here? We're firstly organic and we're 100% pasture fed. It's a single suckled herd, so that means all the calves will stay with their mums for at least 12 months until they calve again. We rear all our cattle until we've, we finish them at sort of 24 to between 24 and 30 months of age, where um, they all go to Riverford. <laughs> So you've got a mixed farm and, and that's, what, what exactly does a mixed farm, what does that mean? A true mixed farm uh, would be perhaps, you know, some cows, some vegetables, some sheep and some chickens. Generally, anything that's not just focusing on one production. So the benefits of, of being a mixed farm is that you've got cows there to build your fertility for when you want to grow cereals or, or, or crops. Um, so mainly vegetables and cereal crops are, are quite hungry crops, so they're taking nutrients out of the ground. We need to get fertility back into that soil. And these beautiful creatures are the best thing for doing that. So once we've finished a, 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 you know, our, our round of vegetables in a field, we will then plant a herbal lay, which, uh, which the cattle then will graze for three to four years and all the time they're pooing on the ground and the food our fertility so that we can then grow healthy vegetables. Hello. Where have you come from? <laughs> it's neat. So the, all of these crops mixed with the grass and the, the cows grazing on top, the manure that they're shooting out, this is kind of like the perfect combination for, for soil fertility. And Yes, I, I think so. We're trying to be as self-sufficient as we possibly can. Um, and not relying on bringing in yeah, those artificial fertilisers and nutrients from, from outside the, the holding. Plus the biodiversity is, is amazing. Um, with swords of grass like this, there's insects, um, butterflies, moths here all the time, which is uh, you know, just food for, for wildlife. God, yeah, I mean, you can, feel, you can feel the buzz of insects and, and, and bird life here, actually. And I heard that you've done a survey recently and you had the highest amount of bird species. Yes, we, about, uh, about two months ago, we had a bird survey done and I think there were 38 species of bird on the two hours that they were here. 17 species, I think, which were on the red list. Um, so that's all sort of birds which are sort of classes becoming endangered. How does this style of farming really benefit nature, would you say? A monocrop of just rye grass. There is no flowering um, plants in it at all, so you wouldn't see any bees, any insects. Um, but with uh, these, these diverse herbal lays, you're getting just so many more insects. So Kate, we've seen the cows with Andy. Cows get a really bad rap. Some people would say we shouldn't be eating or we should barely be eating any. I mean, so this approach to farming is having the, the livestock that really Ooh, Oh, I may just have to interrupt you there. Um, so let's just call the animals the cows here that live uh, specifically within a suckler herd, the suckler herd. And let's remember that they are sentient animals and that we absolutely appreciate having them around. Not just a column on some accountant's balance sheet, uh, profit and loss. This isn't about inputs and outputs. This is beautiful animals, well adapted to this particular environment. They thrive here so well on 100% pastures and browsing the lovely hedgerows. Uh, with very little intervention, soft temperaments, easy calving, great mothers. So we won't use the word stock here, yeah, Emily. So they're really, they're part of the, it's a holistic approach and they are part of that. And from a climate change is such a hot topic, from a kind of climate perspective, do you think oh, that your meat is more Thank you so much for steering friendly. me onto that, Emily. So carbon sequestration, oh my goodness. Um, you know, this is massive. We are using the Farm Carbon Toolkit to try and get a, a hold of measuring carbon. So this is an example of a holding, which according to this calculator, and I know there are many, but this one seems to be a pretty reliable one. We are sequestering 
more carbon than we are emitting. So that's actually really, really crucial to know that these amazing pastures where the cows live, where they graze, are definitely, and our beloved cows, are definitely part of the solution, not the problem. So it's been amazing to come here today and understand a bit more about mixed farming and how it works and see it in action. And I think that one of the things that really stands out to me is how the animals actually really play a part in this holistic system and actually benefit nature and biodiversity and soil fertility as well. And when, when you compare that to the likes of industrial agriculture, which is really taking away from the planet's resources and depleting nature, it's, it's the total opposite and um, it's, really, it's really inspiring to see.